true hockey horror story. Here we go. I already see where this is going. Jesus. My name is Jude, and I'm 27 years old. Right. I've always loved going camping ever since I was a young boy. Some of my earliest memories were of me sitting around the fire with mom, dad, and grandfathers, singing songs and telling stories. Wow. Whenever we told stories, we always ended the night on a scary story. Wow. Right before going to bed. Jesus. And my grandfather's stories were always the best. Yeah, because he's a grandfather. He's sus. He got sus stories for years, bruh. Why we gotta end it on a scary note? Why can we end it with Teletubbies and and flowers and cupcakes and birthday candles and and butterflies and all that goodness and Adidas? Really? Most of your childhood was what'd you say? Just just that. Your childhood was that. Just this. Just in the in the in the middle of the zone. Of cluckness, surrounded by cluckness, a substance. Gotta be honest, uh, your childhood, it, it's, it's not something I wouldn't be bragging about. Just you gotta be honest, to be honest. Your childhood was a cluck childhood. You just didn't know it until it was too late. Descriptions gave me chills as he described vivid characters and monsters from his imagination. Wow. I always loved to hear his stories. Imagination. But once, when I was 10 years old, something happened that scares me to this day. Oh, yeah. One cool autumn day, my parents decided to take me camping with my grandfather, as we always did around that time of year. We arrived at the campsite around 6 o'clock. And on the way in, I saw that the campsite we were driving into was different than the one we usually camped at. Sus! The entrance to the campground seemed old, and a lichen-covered stone sign with the name of the grounds greeted us as we drove in. We arrived and set up our tents. After eating dinner and cleaning up, we sat around the campfire as usual to tell our stories. Wait a minute. You're, you're, oh man, look, just look, look at this cluckness right now. Do you see this cluckness right now? And to top it all off, you're with the old person. Jesus. Gotta be honest, ah, I'm getting a bad feeling about this. Uh, I really am. Now, never one of y'all got on, got on Adidas. It's in the middle of the night. You with the old person, sus person. Talking about vivid characters and imagination. Shit. Trees. And cluckness as far as the eye can see. I got beyond it. It's not going to end well. It's not. Oh. Brace for cluckness. I can't remember all of the stories told. Except for the last. My grandfather's story. I remember the smell of the burning wood. And burnt orange sunlight casting long shadows off into the trees behind us. As he began to tell his tale. He started by saying that it was a true story. From his wow. childhood. Wow. And he had waited to tell it to me until I was old enough. And this grabbed my attention. As usually my grandfather told fake stories. Don't touch me. About himself. Don't touch me like that. He said that he had been camping at the same campsite we were staying at when his story occurred. He started by saying the campground had been built back in the 1930s by CCC workers during the Great Depression, which, looking back, explained the oldness of the park. But at the time, as a kid, I really didn't care. He said that one night, around 1960-something, while camping with his father, 
He was fishing at the lake down at the end of the long hiking trail that led back to the campground. Okay. His dad told him it was time to leave, and they started off down the trail. Okay. As he was walking, he began to feel a strange sensation, as if he was being followed. He turned back, but supposedly saw nothing several times. He kept walking until he said he was stopped by a long, eerie moan rippling out from behind the trees. He described it as sounding like a ghost. Why you stop? A person being slowly injured. Why you stop? He and his dad stopped in their tracks. Wow. His dad apparently tried to tell him it was a coyote, but my grandfather knew better. Keep going. He told me it wasn't a coyote. Keep walking. He believed it was something else. Keep going. Something more sinister. Oh my God. Nevertheless, after this encounter, he returned back to the campsite with his dad and never saw or heard anything else. He claimed that this was true. And obviously, he wouldn't be telling this to us if he hadn't been affected by it. But to me, it seems silly. Scared by a noise? Come on. <laughs> anyway, about two days later, I was walking back to the site with my grandfather from a long day of hiking and picking wild berries in the nearby forest. Both of us were carrying heavy baskets full of berries to bring home. Sus. The sun was setting and I noticed the long shadows peering out from behind the trees. As it began to grow darker, dead darker, the trail seemed to grow longer and longer. I began to feel a weird sensation in my stomach. See? Like I was being watched. Ah, oh, there it is. After about five minutes, the feeling began to grow, and I looked at my grandfather. That's the clock gene. You, it's, because it's a gene, you can't really... You feel me? You can't really get away from it. Like, oh, yeah, I feel like you clucked for life. You know, every every one of your family members gonna be clucked. If you have the club team like that, it's gonna keep happening over and over and over, generation after generation after generation after generation after generation after generation after generation. Dead ass, to be honest. Just like that happened to your grandfather, it's happening to you. And if you have kids, it's going to happen to them. Or it may skip a generation. You know? But, yeah. That, that, there it is. There it is. He looked right back at me with the same fearful eyes. I was in shock. Did he feel the same feeling? Sus. Then I remembered his story about the way he felt the night he heard the noise. Pause. I began to walk faster and so did my grandfather, without saying a word. After about 20 minutes, it was completely dark. Wow. And our arms ached for carrying the berries up the trail. Right as I turned a corner, I heard a long, eerie moan. No, you didn't. My heart stopped as I froze in fear. My grandfather looked at me and said, it's time to go. Stop. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Keep going. Don't stop. Just because your heart stops don't mean your legs stop. Relax. I know what that sounds like. I'm just, I'm just saying. You know what I mean. Keep going. You're already in a cluck space, in a cluck environment. With cluck things happening to you and around you. Keep going. Don't stop for nothing. That we began wailing swiftly down the trail as fast as we could without dropping our berries. It, it don't look like it. Just as I began to relax, I heard it again. Only this time, it was much louder. Oh my God. It sounded like someone being murdered. It was terrifying. It came from directly behind us, and I felt a burning sensation in the back of my head. Hurry up! Run! I dared not look back. Cluck the berries. I sat in fear, wondering of what could have made the noise. When suddenly, I heard my grandfather scream, Run! I whipped my head around Why? in the dark, foggy light. 
I squinted and I saw a tall, slender black shadow dart oh. between the trees about a hundred feet behind us on the trail. I instantly dropped my bucket. You should and already did that. Wind down the trail as fast as I could. My grandfather was behind me. And I became worried about him as he was an old man. I wasn't. I was afraid he might hurt himself running down the rocky trail. Cluck, cluck him. And I didn't stop. Nor did he until we reached the campsite. That night, I sat in my tent. Get off. Heart me. racing. Get off. Thinking me. about what could have made that noise. Get off me. After we came back home, we never, never returned to the old campsite. And to this day, that experience still haunts me. To be honest, I, I will be done with camping and all. Yeah, I will be really done with camping. That will be my last time ever camping ever again. If I ever do, it's in the comfort of my own home and everything that will be locked should be locked. Just saying, I'm double locking everything, triple locking everything, quadruple locking everything, and I'm checking the checklist. <sighs> Best believe I'm checking the checklist. Mama didn't check the checklist. Hey, Daddy didn't check the checklist. Hey, Pox didn't check the checklist. Hey, my sister didn't check the checklist. Hey, nobody checked the checklist. Hey, Gay didn't check the checklist. Hey, Gay didn't check the checklist. Dead ass, I'll be done with camping. Um, yeah, so you, you definitely have the clutching that's going to keep happening over and over and over again. So there's really no way of getting around getting around it. So, yeah, you're clutched for life. Um, I feel like your grandfather was in cahoots. So, yeah, um, that's that's a problem in, in itself. Um... I'm just, I'm really confused on why people, when they find themselves in a clutch up situation, that they stop for God knows what reason. Why would you stop in a clutch situation? Just keep going. You know, whether, whether or not you're running or crawling, you're still going. You're still moving forward. You're not coming to a complete stop. Don't you ever come to a complete stop when you find yourself in a clutch up situation. That's all I'm saying. And damn the berries. And don't ever look back. Don't ever look back. Ever. Ever look back. Because that's how you really clutch. You, you, if you are, so you find yourself in a clutch up situation, right? I think the two most ways that you can cluck up even more is stopping dead in your tracks or looking back. Yeah. Or, no, number three is, is talking really loud or not. I mean, just talking in, in general, like talking to the, the person or thing that's about to cluck you up. Yeah. Three things. Talking. Talking, running, no, talking, okay, wow, I just confused myself. Okay, the three things, the, 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 the three most things that can, that can cluck you up even more in a clutch up situation would have to be stopping at a complete stop, uh, looking back and talking to whatever or oh, whoever is trying to cluck you up. I think that's the most, I think the top three things that can cluck you up even more, I think. Yeah, that's why, I mean, I'm trying to just think off the top of my head, but yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, man. I mean, camping is nice, but you also taking a risk too, so it's like a 50-50. If you want to do camping, by all means, just go right ahead and do it. I'm just, you you know the risk. If you don't, you will. Keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy. My family.